But I'm excited to introduce my friend, former dear friend, dear friend, dear friend, former. What was your title with the Saints? Director of Sports Medicine. Direct former director of Sports Medicine, New Orleans Saints. He was our trainer in 2009. Won a College World Series with us at LSU. Left LSU. Went to become what was with the Saints. Was there for nine years. Nine years. He was. Drew Brees is the reason Drew Brees was on the field for as long as he was on the field. Beat up. And then it's hard to stay away from Baton Rouge. It's hard to stay away from LSU. He comes back to LSU and now he's the director of sports medicine here at LSU. Bo Lowry. Bo, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. Dude, this is like a this. reunion. Man. I know. I, love yeah. it. I know. We've been talking People about People don't getting understand the history here. Like, oh it's strong. It's firm. It is. It yeah. is strong. It is strong. I mean, you was, you're the first trainer I had at LSU, right? Like, you were. You, know, you were tough on us, but it was good. We needed to be. You needed to have... Yeah, you know, it was funny. So, who was I talking to the other day? I said, you know, I remember when we were recruiting Mikey. I said, because initially, I want to say your junior year, you didn't even get offered a scholarship, mm -hmm. right? So, it's like, hey, so I'm not going to name the coaches. They said, hey, we got this kid, uber talented. He's a quarterback at St. Thomas More. A lot of upside. It's like, but his mom's really hot, so we need to bring him to campus a couple of times. Like, so we're gonna spend some time with him. I will never forget that. I know. Uh, you don't even have to tell hey, me the coach because so, I know who it is. So for Are me, it's know, hilarious know, because yeah. I was like, wait, why is he not naming a coach? And yeah, I, I know. know why. I already know who it is. Think about it for like three seconds. You know, I'm like, ah, yeah. Look back and go, oh, it's me. Like, I, I wonder. I wonder why I was getting so much attention. That makes sense. Oh, now. that's great. I love it. Oh man! Mike, why don't you go to the trainers room and talk to your mom? <laughs> but you know, oh, just just that whole process yeah. of remembering you guys as you guys were getting recruited, and um, then sort of where it went to and where we were able to get to in 2009. I think it was, man, what a special group! Mm -hmm. What a special group! You know, every time I don't send a lot of tweets out, I usually just retweet. But anytime I send a tweet out dealing with any of you guys, it's like champ for life. Yep. Right? Always. That was our motto. Always. That was our motto. I, it's, uh, it. and the, I mean, it's, it's a testament to that because you look at our friends, right? 90% of the guys that are on that team are all still best friends. We all hang out. We all talk. Now, the other 10% are only because they're not here. Yeah. Because they moved back home yeah. or did something else. It wasn't like... You go through that team and there really wasn't many on that team that didn't get along, right? And it's just that's that's kind of how you create that culture and that winning mentality. And that's actually a perfect segue into the football talk, right? You came back from the Saints, right? And that's one of the biggest things New Orleans, the New Orleans Saints are known for in the NFL right now is how close and how tight that locker room is and that organization, how nothing gets out. Everything it stays in-house. It's dealt with in-house, and you leave something like that to come to LSU where the last couple years it hasn't been the case. And then you come to a, an organization and a team that has a new coach, a new staff, and he is instilling that type of culture again. What have you seen, and if there, are there any comparisons between what he's doing here and what you saw in New Orleans? Yeah, it's, it's interesting, and I'm not just saying it because you guys are here, but – I, I, I sort of equated our teams in New Orleans, which when you start talking about professional ball, and all of you guys play professional ball, right? And you would say, hey, professional ball is different from college ball. I would tell you our locker room in New Orleans was the same. I compared it to our baseball locker room where like literally guys cared about each other so much. I never will forget, I tell this story all the time. This was 2015, 2016. Uh, at the time, our right tackle, Zach Streif, had an MCL injury, right? He wasn't, he wasn't playing that game. This is Saturday night, right before the game. We're in there doing treatment, and basically the way it worked, we had treatment, then they had a team meeting, then they'd break off, right? So Drew was always the last one to walk into the training room because it's where everybody congregated before dispersing into the team meeting. And Streif said, uh, is there any way like I can play. Is there any way? I'm like, dude, you're on crutches. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what? And he was literally like sincere. He's like, I don't want to let that dude down yep. and pointed to Drew. And I felt the same way with, with our team back in 09, but to have that feeling at the professional level, right? Like 
That is so rare. Super rare. And and I'll tell you, like, what Coach Payton and what Mickey Loomis and what those guys did in building that culture, because to win, you got to have that culture. Yep. Uh, it was phenomenal. I think, you know, it's funny you say that because <laughs> you can build that culture around a room, around a team, and you can have great success and maybe not actually win the big one. When you actually win something, right? I don't, I don't like to bring this back to those years, but it's funny because he's, you know, he's been to both levels and seen it in both levels. And to actually win one, you understand what kind of selflessness it actually takes from a yep, group, yep, right? And it's, you can get right there and don't do it. And it's so, it's so like going through the years and as you get older now, you start to understand like how fleeting that feeling and understanding, like that's actually what it takes yeah. right. that gets you over the hump I mean, and getting... 25 people getting 53 people getting yeah. it's so hard and to you do have to and so you have hard. to have people stay healthy you have to have good luck you can't yeah. like 2009 i was a freshman we won it the next year i'm like oh we're gonna win again like we have everybody back right. Auto gets hurt a couple injuries right and you're like well it's hard my junior year young team we're decent but we don't make it to the postseason it's like crap and you know, but like how we many? We had the, one year. I was like, I don't. Even, I thought I was gonna make. I thought I was gonna be almost three years. Well, but that's yeah. my thing about it. So like, you knew because you saw it. You saw the blueprint. And you did it. But now you got incoming freshmen. Maybe you got a transfer. Yep. Maybe you got a guy coming from a JUCO yep. who maybe not yeah, doesn't have, quite do understand it. Maybe yeah. doesn't quite hop on board. Yeah. It's hard, man, and it's yeah. it's crazy to see that because you could have twelve people that right. understand it and get in or fully bought in, but you need everyone to yep. do it. And, and that seen, doesn't always actually mean you win, right. which right. is crazy. That's have right. you seen? Have you seen? You know, because we had a lot of transfers come in, right? Like he had to go. We had half the roster basically yeah. gone. He had to come in, get guys from the portal, get recruits. He had to kind of bring, put his spin on. It. Have you seen those guys that he's brought in kind of buy into? Oh man, yeah. The culture he's, he's putting. Like I would say this, like from where we started in January and in February, and Coach Kelly came in and. Look, he wants to make these guys better human beings, mm -hmm. right? So accountability becomes one of the big monstras, right? So guys would sort of do their own thing, and he's like, no, nah, we're not doing it. I don't care who you are. I don't care how talented you are. But to see all of these guys buy in, it's funny, uh, me and Robert Steeples were standing there. As they were running today and finishing up, and it's like, man, it is amazing to see where this group has come in just a few short months because I would say we don't have a bad kid on the team. Now, we had kids with bad habits, and we had kids that needed to be taught. Um, but the way Coach Kelly put everything sort of together as far as having a Tiger standard, yep. and, hey, there's an accountability. And not just football-wise, you're going to go to class. Man, you're going to go to your tutors. You're going to be present at the weight room. You're not going to be late. If you're hurt, you're going to be in the training room. You're going to be in the training room on time. And that is the standard. That's not extra. You're not doing no. anything extra. That's standard. It doesn't take effort to do that. It it's doesn't doing take what you're effort. asked to do. Absolutely. And does it kind of remind you of Ron Paul at the beginning? Yeah. Right? And then just, or yeah. you just look at a Nick Saban, the Coach K, the Bill Belichick, right? Not sure. everyone, Pete Carroll does things. There's, there's different ways to win. But man, that structure and that discipline and that focus and everybody on the same page. And it's either you get in line and get on board or you're not going to get Or get out of the way. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And, that, yeah. and that's that. And I don't know him, and I know he's both spends a lot of time with him. But just from watching him on TV and hearing him speak and look, looking at tidbits, you're like, okay, this guy. Well, that has to make you feel good about it because if if coming from inside the program, if you can say that, and they haven't literally played a single down of real right. football yet, that means a lot because when you add success to that, that only snowballs. Yeah. You know, stuff like that only builds. Yeah. And more. to your question, you know, I would say the transfers coming in, they didn't know any better. And this is all they were used to. So the guys that were there, that was the biggest yeah, group right. to, man, get them to buy in and get right. them to see and understand that, hey, man, we love you. That's why we're holding you accountable. Yep. It's not the other way around. Right. So. And you see, so I, I talked about it before because people were panicking, like, oh, we don't have, everybody's gone, everybody's left, everybody's we only have half a roster. I'm like, honestly, I think that could be a good thing. Like, you have a new coach with a new staff. That is the hardest thing to do is to get the current guys that are there to buy in to what you're trying to sell them. 100%. And if you don't have a full 85-man roster to have to go and convince, you can bring in some of the guys that don't know better like that. I think that would help move the message on along a little bit quicker, right? Like yeah. You, I mean, that's just 
that was kind of what I, that was my perception of it, you know, and. Absolutely. You got to have leaders and you yeah. know that with every good team that you've ever been on, like there again, I was fortunate enough to see for nine years, one of the yeah. better, I would say the best leader that's ever walked on the face of the earth. Like I saw, and it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily verbal, you know, from Drew. It was how he carried himself as being the first guy in the building. It was, you know, working hard. It was being organized. It was, and, and look, I told you how Zach felt about everybody. Everybody on that team felt that way about him. Yep. You know, he would, he just, it, everything else was secondary. Football was primary and everybody felt that. Um, Cause I've even said like, for me, it made me better at what I do. It made me better. Um, because I think a little bit of a cultural change needed to happen when I first got there. And, and at the end of the day, y'all are all players. and. A little different in college, you know, you may have had a trainer in high school, you may not have. You get to the professional level, you've had an experience and you're like, man, does this guy care about me? Right. Yeah. Does this guy have right. my best interest at right. heart? Right. Because I've had, I've had that conversation a lot, especially in the NFL. It's like, man, well, you're paid by the team, right? So you're, 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 the team's best interest. The te right. you're putting the team right. ahead of me. Right. Yeah. And look, before I even took the head position, I, I had a meeting with Sean and Mickey and I said, look, I promise you we put the players first and we take care of them, everything else will work out. And that is so true. And that is my belief today. Absolutely. Even as we're going through a bunch of the changes and stuff we are at LSU, it all centers around our student athlete. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not making changes to, you know, help me or to help our staff or to help our doctors or to help. It's all about our student athlete. Yep. And as long as that's the focus I've found, you're going to win. No doubt, you're yeah. going to win in the training room setting. You have to feel – a player has to feel, especially when you get to the professional level, has to feel that they are – that they matter, right? They yeah. have to feel that the team is with them. They don't – like there's such a disconnect between player and organization, upper management and professional sports because you feel like you're a pawn. If the upper management feels – shows you that they care about you, that goes miles. What you – I think what you find a lot in pro sports too, which in the, I would imagine you could probably find it a good bit in college sports. I just never saw it here. Is you find people basically trying to tell you that you're playing for basically the name on your back instead of the people that are employing you slash, you know, that have brought you in trying to make you understand and feel and have a real love for the people that you're around, right. for the university or team that you're playing for to try to get you to be better for that situation. Yep. Now look, you know and you get into it knowing that you may move, you may go somewhere else, but while I'm here, yep. it needs to be best for what's here. Yep. No doubt. You Absolutely. Know? And if, um, if you don't get that feeling from the other side of it, it's hard to get the best out of someone. Right. And it doesn't matter what level they're performing at. Right. It's just probably a little more in there. Yep. And you know, things like you, you go from professional to college, there's a lot of similarities between both, but there's a lot of differences, right? And then, you know, we met each other in 2009, and from 2009 until 2022, there's a lot of things that change and evolve within sports medicine, within technology, within the way the game is played, and you know, being able to go through college, the NFL, and be able to make those adjustments. What are some of the big things that you have seen change in the course of your time as the director of sports medicine within you know the last 20 years i guess well look I, i'll tell you and you know this is patting our strength and conditioning um group on the back a little bit man we're using technology and we're applying technology to how we practice uh to what we ask our players to do and i think that's probably the biggest thing you look at player load and the catapult being able to use that data and go guess what i know we have the ability to go practice for three hours but we're not going to do it because the the risk reward, man, it, it's not worth it, right? So yeah. let's get let's get what we need in, and then back off these guys so so they can have fresh legs and they can right. like learn mentally. Um, Work so, smarter, not harder. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. I say it. You know, I, I use a lot of the experience that I had in the NFL. Right, a lot of the games where we played really really well was our Thursday night games, mm -hmm. right? So we play on Sunday. The players have a day off, then there's a film session, then, you know, you may have a walkthrough, right. and then you get ready to play. Nobody's hitting each other. And nobody's hit each other, and all of a sudden, man, we're fresh, we're flying around. Um, 
you know, I, I talked Coach Peyton in, I guess it was 2020, um, we had walk-through Wednesdays. And that was the best, right? Yeah. Giving these guys an extra day yeah. and letting them just get mentally prepared. They didn't have to worry about, right. there is no contact, there's none of that happening. Walk through Wednesdays, and then let's get after it a little bit on Thursday and Friday and be ready to go for Sunday. So I've always been of the mindset of, hey, less is more. Now, as you transition to the college setting, man, there's still a developmental aspect that's happening, right? So guys still have to work and get better. Um, so you've got to navigate that a, a little bit differently than you do the NFL. But, man, I'm super excited uh, for what Coach Kelly's brought because I can tell you this. Based on our winter conditioning, that's how he set up our spring practices and the volume of practice wow. as we started rolling <laughs> <God> in <forbid. laughs> to spring, right? So it's like, man, this this is awesome, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so he's very – He's like, very he's analytical, with you with very like technology-driven. Yeah. yeah, he listens. Look, and he knows his stuff now. Like, I've been, I've, I've been uberly impressed. Nice. Wow. That's, but, fun, that's fun to hear. I got, I got a question, man, just because, like, it, it kind of blows my mind. Like, you sit there and you watch technology and you watch injuries as they happen and then knowing what used to be the normal timetable for certain big injuries and then now seeing how medicine and technology and sports are all driven and how it's how things like that are getting cut down to different, shorter amount of times. Does it blow your mind being in medicine and sports for so long to see Injuries that used to take nine months now. I mean, ACLs six months. used to take a year. Now you can get ACL back. In Achilles six months. used to be a year. Now take eight months. Like and stuff like this. Does it blow your mind seeing stuff like that and, be, and seeing like still humans being yeah. able to do stuff? No, to be honest with you, it, it's 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 extremely stimulating, right? Because because we're all getting better, right? People think medicine, especially sports medicine and orthopedics, is black and white, right? It is so much gray. Yeah. It's so much gray, right? Not. You know, I was on the phone last night uh, with a parent, and I just used the analogy, like, in understanding baseball, right, people think all of a sudden, oh, there's a labral tear in the shoulder. Oh, my gosh, we have to have surgery. I'm like, no, there's a study done back in 2010 that they, they had, like, over 200 major league pitchers. 66% of them had labral tears, and they were asymptomatic. Right. They were asymptomatic. <laughs> you know, my buddy in Houston says, look, if you're going to throw, if you have a pitcher that throws 95, they better have a slap tear. Yeah. Right. They right. better to be able to have that motion. Yeah. So it is, to answer your question, it is so great. But I think as we gain more knowledge, yeah, it's awesome to see things speeding up. But I'll tell you, there's things that are slowing down too, right? So you've got to respect – physiology and you've got to respect the healing aspect mm -hmm. so you know it's that's what i tell parents and now with the nil deal it's crazy we have these agents that are coming into play luckily i know all of them right. um, <laughs> one, it, it was funny we had one of our players get hurt and 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 one of the agents called and he talked to one of the assistants and said hey i'm i'm the agent for this player and um i got on the phone i was like hey dude he's like what are you doing there what are you doing? Like, you're dealing with LSU kids now? I said, I'm at LSU. He said, ah, oh, dad gum. Okay. I was like, yeah, this is how we're doing it. This is how we're going to play Don't it. Don't bully my sister. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead oh, shut this down yeah. right now. We're not doing that. We're not oh, doing that. Oh, this is <laughs> oh, uh, uh, have a good day. <laughs> okay, never mind. You're good. Call, 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 call the player. Hey, buddy, you're in good hands. Yeah. Just do what he says. I don't yeah. care. <laughs> So it, it has been really good. Look, the fact that I was in New Orleans and got to work with all of the guys all over across the country from, you know, the best hip guy in the country, Brian Kelly, to Ella Trosh on the West Coast, to Steve Shin, the hand surgeon that did Drew's thumb, to Bob Anderson, the foot and ankle guy. So I consider most of those guys good friends. I worked with them so closely. So I, I feel like we put um, our Hopefully players in 30 years to say Matt Fury, that's something. Dude, we are recruiting. I know. I'm recruiting boys. I'm recruiting boys. We've heard. We've heard. We've heard. I try to talk to Matt every couple of weeks. And just, hey, dude. Let's put up a hey, plug in for him right now. Yeah. Matt, listen. I'm working on listen that. Hey, I know. Uh, we'll send the clip. We'll cut the clip and send it to him. Even if we don't post it, we'll send it to him. Um, Personal testimony. Yeah. yeah. Just for you. Um, but y'all are in the middle of like this transformation, right, of the, of the trainer room. Like it's a $15, 20000000 million renovation, at least from what I mean, obviously I don't know the numbers exactly, but 
what's going into that? Are you the one that is kind of like the, the, the mad scientist behind it? Like you're the one coming up with the plans and the ideas and what, so what's going into that? What can, like, what do you want? What do you want to change? Well, let me first tell you, man, I'm so fortunate to be back at LSU, right? So I love New Orleans and I love the Saints and I, I had a great job. Miss Gale is by far the best owner in professional sports, period. So I wasn't looking to leave, right? Um, but you know, Scott recruited me. I mean, and he recruited me pretty hard and he came down to New Orleans and we had coffee a couple of times and his biggest thing was like, let me tell you what, I want to have the best sports medicine program in the country, bar mm. none. Love that. So for That's me, that. like that, that work in this environment, look, all these universities are going to get the best coaches, right? Yeah. They're going to go have the best facilities. They're going to do, uh, but man, when you start talking about, man, I want to take care of our student athletes at an elite level. And, and I'll quote him here. He said, I want to be second to nobody. I said, I'm in, I'm in. I'm in. So day one, when I got there, look, they're always upgrading at LSU, right? right? When I got there, it was like, ah, man, there needs to be some changes to our training room. Like, we're in the day and age that we know recovery is key for our guys, right? We ask a lot out of them, not only athletically on the practice field, but, man, in the classroom, they're going to tutors, they're doing all of this stuff. So how are we going to help them be the best version of themselves? So, you know, there again – we did, we did training camp when I was in New Orleans at the Greenbrier, and Drew and Jimmy and a bunch of those guys spent time over in Virginia Beach where the SEALs train, and they were using this technology with float tanks, right, just to be able to decompress, to be able to go from their own mission or in training to, man, just decompress. And, you know, you look at some of the science behind the float tank as, man, that's a high uh -huh. salt content. You're mm -hmm. just floating. But man, if you can rest in there for an hour, that's equivalent to three to four hours of it's REM like pitch sleep. Black, right? wow. It's pitch black. It's sensory Quiet. deprivation. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's amazing. So being able to bring that in, being able to have the cryo chamber, right? So I say this all the time, like, and you guys are, are a testimony to it. Is man, there's a lot of different ways to recover. You have to have options for guys. I could say, hey, here's a cold tub, jump in it. Man, Ochingo be like, screw you, I'm not doing that. Are you kidding no, that would be me. The whole one hundred percent me. I'm that guy. So and, and there's a lot of guys. So, so get you to gotta have practice. Options. <laughs> so you have to have options, right? So we have the hot and cold tubs, but man, being able to bring in crowd chambers, three minutes. Suck it up for three minutes and man, you'll feel the benefit, right? So being able to do that, being able to have these Nova Thor, these red light beds to where man, you actually gonna have some regeneration happening um, and feel better. Um, so just the whole nine, being able, we already bring in a, a yoga lady for our recovery days. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, a chiropractor that I sort of brought with me. He helps out at the Saints still, but he helps us out too, Stuart Fresh from the North Shore. And you know, so having chiropractor, having yoga, and then Anna and her group over at Trifecta, <laughs> bring in four or five of her massage therapists in to help take care of the guys. And then, then the Norma Tech, you know, Jack, I think, did a great job in designing the locker room. So there's an area for them to, to be able to lay down. But part of this new expansion, there's going to be a dark room, a sleep room. Nap room, yeah. There it's, you go. It, we're going to actually have a space to do sleep studies. So if you have, like, some sleep apnea stuff, we can actually find that out. We need to get you on a CPAP for a period of time. So... Um, we're trying to make sure that every aspect of recovery is, is taken care of. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it's been fun. We're actually in the middle of that, working with the architects, and we're working with the same group that helped us in New Orleans because we did a I mean, training. That's got to be huge innovation. recruiting, right? Like, that's got to be, oh. you know, I mean, obviously, like, you know, when you're a high school kid getting recruited, like, you want to come to college and you want to play at a big, in the big, on the big stage and you want all the nice and shiny things. But, like, you know, some, you don't, probably don't realize how important – it is to have, you know, the prehab stuff and the stuff to make sure that you recover and that you don't get hurt. And then you go there and you see it and you're like, damn, okay. And then you start listening to like, especially now, everybody's so health and like very um, vocal about what they're doing to stay healthy. You know, Russell Wilson says he spends a million plus dollars on his body. LeBron James says the same thing, all this stuff. So now it's kind of like this new mainstream thing. I have this kid come in and say, man, 
this is the stuff LeBron and Russell Wilson are doing. Like to me, it's funny. I don't do that. Well, to me, it's yeah. funny because what you're really saying, what I hear when I hear you speak about this stuff, is that bells and whistles cool, but if I come in here as a recruit, you're you're like you're paying attention to bettering me. Right? Yeah. Yep. Why would why would I not want to choose a right. place like that? Well, look, you know what I mean. Yeah, and look, I, I will never negatively recruit. We have a couple of schools that's negatively recruited against of us course. and the training room. That's what blew me away. We had a kid that came in and said, "Hey, uh, can you show me? Can you show me your cryo chamber? Can you show me this?" It's like, "No, I can show you. Here's it's coming." He's like, "Ah, oh, that's what the school told me. And if I don't see it now, that it won't be here." And I was like, <laughs> that's ruthless. Well, it's, oh, wow. it's going to be right here. You see this? Oh, wow. That's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Right. yeah. I'm like, wow. And, you know, and in that same token, there again, I'll never speak badly, but being at the next level, right, we went to the combine every year. I know the schools <laughs> that we red flag because their kids were worn completely out. Right. And right. we had a list of those kids. And unless that was an elite guy, man, we were going to steer away from right. those guys. So, you know, in talking to these kids, it's like, and I say it all the time, man, we treat you the person, not you the player. Yep. yep. And there's a difference, right? Yep. Because, you know, I had the conversation with a lot of guys, and look, y'all have all retired from ball at this point, especially in football too. My goal is to do stuff like this, mm -hmm. right? Like to have a relationship because we're going to take care of you. Like, if I cared about just you, the player, man, it may be a little bit different yeah, story. Yeah, right. But it's never about that. I want you to be able to be 40, 45 years old, running with your kids, playing with your kids. We're not going to shoot you up every game just to get you to play. And then all right. of a sudden, you know. There's a bigger yeah. picture. It, too. There is a way bigger picture. Yeah. Right. No doubt. There's quality of life behind it, man. 100%. And that's, and that's, that's kind of what I think the a lot of guys in the NFL, like part of the, what the union's fighting for is – is that not, they don't get that after yeah. football, right? And that's they're trying to help. And that, I mean, that's a big thing. He starts from the college level when you start really banging up against each other, and then it kind of leads into the into the NFL level. But um, you know, I guess we'll stay on the recruiting pitch. People always talked about Brian Kelly not being able to recruit in Louisiana. How is his <laughs> recruiting? How has his recruiting pitch been? Like, how is he as a as a recruiter with the kids? Is he because people see him on TV? And you're like, oh, he's red faced. He's you know this, and then you see him here. And it's like, I feel like he's starting to like, he's got the Louisiana like has gotten to him. Like, damn, let's relax. Good people. What you prescribe him? No. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it seems like he's kind of like made a turn. Not necessarily in, as far as like his way he coaches, but like how he tr goes about his business because. It feels like Louisiana, obviously, is a little bit different than South Bend. Yeah, right. yeah. And look, I think BK is great because I'll tell you this, his whole philosophy with recruiting um, and the little that I've dealt with him with it has been like, man, let's develop relationships because I want good kids who want to graduate, who want to do the right thing. And, you know, that may not be the five-star that's right here in Baton Rouge or that's right here in Louisiana – they don't have the character and the makeup, then they may not be for us. But, man, I want to develop relationships with them, and I want to get close to them, and I want to get close to their family. And, look, because his house is right there on the lakes, he's able to have all these kids at his house. Because yeah, that's not illegal anymore. Family. That's no, right. That's not illegal anymore. Oh, wow. That's it right. used to be, but yeah. not anymore. Yep. Yeah. So, with that being said, like, he's – cool down to earth like man he's got a lot of confidence but he's such a good person mm -hmm. right i've dealt with a lot of people who are you know cocky and confident but ugh, like yeah. ugh. like yeah. are they good people do they really care and right. i tell you our players hang out with him some they love him yeah they love him yeah do you miss baseball at all ever i know you've been a fool I for so long i still live baseball yeah <laughs> i still I live that. baseball look i can tell you um so me and Drew got to be really, really close. But I think one of the reasons is because of my baseball background, right? He loves baseball, right? He loves he baseball. Loves kids are big on it too, right? Oh, yeah. It. Like, that's all we talked about. Like, Satchel Paige and, you know, some of these <laughs> older cats. Like, literally, he would – I would all of a sudden get Baby. a bat – and it would be like, hey, I just saw this on auction, and it's a bat that was used in 1912. <laughs> and it was like, so, yeah. Was baseball, baseball, baseball junkie. Oh, was. big time. I love big that. Ted I like Williams. That That's the reason wow. we wore number nine. 
Oh wow! Really? I oh yeah! Wow! I did not know that. Yeah, it's incredible. Ted Ted Williams is still alive, right? You put him in the chamber. That's he's right. in the cryogenic chamber. <laughs> 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 Get him back, back in there. there. <laughs> him and That's your next job. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's funny. But because of the relationship with Drew, I got to meet Tom House. Right. And Tom's a good friend of mine now, and uh, so I still work with Tom and do stuff with Tom, and a lot of the stuff that we did with Drew, we're doing with our quarterbacks now at LSU. Oh, wow. So we've actually developed like a developmental program for all of our quarterbacks um, wow. based on a lot, most of Tom House's philosophy. Yeah. Um, so it's good. I talk to Tom all the time. He comes to Baton Rouge two times a year and holds clinic Isn't and he teaches from coaches. Is he, he no, has a Tom's, connection down here or no? Uh, no, I don't think he has a connection thought, thought, necessarily thought, down I mean, here. I thought was I heard he? that. But no. Was he? Decently tight with Moffat at all? No. Now, he, I'll give you a – Tom will tell you this. You know, he's most famous for catching Hank Aaron's oh, home really? run. Right? He was a relief pitcher for eight years. I didn't know that. Um, in, the, in the major leagues. Yeah. And then turned around. He was a pitching coach. Nolan Ryan was the guy yeah. that, that he's sort of famous for helping take care of. And he's, uh, he's brilliant. Yeah. He's brilliant. It's been awesome being able to work with him. But to tie that in, right, so he dealt with only baseball until Drew. And Drew hurt his shoulder back in 06 prior to, um, to coming to New Orleans. And uh, Drew reached out to him, and he sort of did the throwing program as, as he was returning to play. And, shoot, Drew was his first guy. And then that progressed to, to right. Tom. And then all of a sudden he had 31 of the 32 quarterbacks <laughs> So that was still sort of that's crazy. Well, he performed a miracle. Well, who, like, was the, who was the only one he didn't have? Uh, to be honest with you, I don't know. I just I mean, know he had. If you're that one, one guy, it's like, one, they're like you probably do something wrong if you're the only what guy. Are, not hey, what, are the odds of, what are the odds of him being in the league still right now? Uh, not great. No, not I great. Assume, I would assume, assume not great. And that was going to be my next question. I know we've kept you here for a long time, so I'm not going to ask too many more. But being around so many guys like Drew and like. Camara and all these guys that kind of have their guys, right? Like oh, and let me train. just tell you, Alvin's one of the smartest dudes you'll ever meet. I, I love that dude. That's like, what I was get you want to talk about uber talented, but man, he's so gifted in a lot of other things other than yeah. just football. Me Doesn't surprise me. You can just see it the way, like he, like how he talks and what he does, and how he's just kind of like. You can tell because he's know. just so mellow. Man. Yeah, like, you can just, he's just so confident in who he is. Mm-hmm. Right. You know. But you know, he has this guy. He has his trainer. You see him balance and do all this stuff and like. That's got to be cool for you in being in sports medicine to be able to see these guys who are really good at what they do and be able to meet them through the guys that you know, you've, made, you've made relationships with and then learn from, you know, from them, right? Like, that's got to be a pretty cool experience. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Look, I say this all the time. Like, you know, I was always a little bit weird. Like, do you guys even remember me at the, um, at the celebration after the national championship? They don't remember a thing. They don't, <laughs> right? So I never will forget. So you guys flew and flew back home. I flew uh-huh. to San Diego to go to a continuing ed course, right? Oh, wow. So there was always like this, man, how can I get better? Yeah. And, and probably the, the, the most beneficial thing to me is just being able to be around these people and learn yeah. from – Tom, who I'm still learning from, and it's awesome, to, yeah, all of these physicians around the country, Kevin Wilk, PT in um, Birmingham, and, you know, all of these subspecialties, from chiropractors in Minnesota to physical therapists and physicians and athletic trainers, and, look, I think you got to be humble and willing to, to learn and get your ego aside, and it has been phenomenal for me. Absolutely, man. I mean, you can tell I'm looking forward to the football season. I'm looking forward to keeping the guys healthy, obviously. I'm looking forward to what the combination of BK and you and the new staff brings, the new breath of fresh air and just kind of new eyeballs. And so, um, Bo, man, you're the best. 